Hi everybody, my name is Dawn and welcome to What's the Stitch, a web series where I answer all of your burning questions about sewing, costuming, and cosplay. Today we're going to do a continuation of our History vs. Media series, where I compare historically based TV shows to what people would have actually worn. As some of you might have guessed, I'm a big fan of historically based TV shows and movies. I fell in love with all the costumes from the moment I saw them on screen, and it's one of the biggest reasons I learned to sew and how I got into costume history to begin with. Of course, the more I learned about history, what people wore, and why they wore what they did, I realized that as incredible as some of the costumes in these movies can be, they're not exactly always what some would call accurate to the period that they're depicting. I know that this is often a deliberate choice by the costume designers or by the producers and directors, because these shows aren't actually intended to be historically accurate. They are dramas used to entertain an audience, so to a point, they do need to conform to our modern sense of aesthetic. For today's episode, I want to talk about Rain, a CW TV series that premiered in 2013 that follows the life of Queen Mary Stuart, otherwise known as Mary Queen of Scots, and her marriage to the French Dauphin Francis. I thought it was a really interesting design choice to hybridize the costumes. All of the extras and background characters are in generally historically accurate-ish costuming, um, with the young main cast in historically inspired and modern couture gowns. What I found very interesting was this was actually done intentionally as a way to highlight the differences between Mary and her ladies and the other members of the French court, with their more avant-garde sense of style being attributed to their age and foreign upbringing and their innate otherness within the court. The first dress I want to talk about is Mary's wedding dress from season one. It is so beautiful. That white lace with the gorgeous illusion neckline and the sparkly beaded belt. It's it's elegant and romantic and princessy, and I would love to wear something that beautiful. In comparison, this is the real dress. Really the only thing that they have in common is that they are white and have long sleeves and a lace collar. White was actually the French color of mourning, so a white dress as a wedding was considered quite a grim omen, and it was quite shocking at the time for Mary to choose this for her wedding gown. Gowns worn by ladies of the court in the mid-16th century had high ruffled collars. Often they used large hanging sleeves and thick gold chains to showcase their wealth and status. As was actually a point of wearing white to begin with, this was another reason that wearing white gowns was super rare for most of history, Purely because it was dreadful to keep clean, as you generally couldn't wash these gowns very often. As you can see, there is quite the difference between them. Rain uses quite a lot of modern styling. You see a lot of characters, particularly Mary and her ladies, in sleeveless or even strapless gowns. A lot of them were actually taken quite literally straight from the Alexander McQueen runway. They use a lot of brocade and lace, which marks them as wealthy, but bare arms and shoulders at the time would have been seen as completely scandalous. 16th century ladies tended to be fully covered with high collars and long sleeves. The bodices themselves often had low square necklines, but they were often paired with a garment called a partlet. This is a sleeveless garment of linen or silk that could be worn over or under the bodice. Um, black velvet partlets were actually in high demand among the upper classes, so you see that a lot in portraiture. Uh, it was very common to match the partlet to the sleeves with blackwork embroidery, which was also super expensive as this was done with a kind of iron oxide to dye them. This is why a, not a lot of examples of those still exist in museums. The most elaborate partlets were made of a latticework of pearls and jeweled beads, which we're going to see in some later examples. Of course, not all the gowns worn in the series are modern. Sometimes they put the ladies in something more vaguely historically inspired, but they are much more storybook princess look than Elizabethan lady. Most women of the era wore their hair covered, usually with a heart-shaped bonnet. Here we have an image of Mary herself wearing a bonnet of open-worked white lace. Uh, Leoman's hats were also popular. Hair was often pinned up and back and rich people often dressed their hair with jeweled pins, feathers, and glass ornaments. In comparison, we have the ladies of Rain, who often wear their hair down and uncovered. It's very flattering to the actresses because, hello, hair envy, but also, again, is very much catering to our modern aesthetic. The men's costumes in Rain are every bit as gorgeous as what they've put the ladies in, but they tend to leave actually a little bit more Victorian than Elizabethan, which is actually very common in historically-based media. I mean, Look at this image of Francis, he looks like Prince Albert, he just does. 
This is an image of Francis in his wedding jacket. It looks like a cross between a Victorian military jacket and a heavily embroidered 18th century frock coat. That being said, I want it. I would wear it forever. I would wear it every day. Someone please put this in my wardrobe because I want it desperately. The detail work is stunning and it shows very well on screen. It's a perfect display of the wealth and opulence within the French court. But it's not at all what a 16th century man would wear. Some of the jackets of the male characters are tailored shorter into an accurate length, but again they bow to modern aesthetic and pair them with long pants and swashbuckler boots, which are a lot more Dread Pirate Roberts. The contrast in cut and color, however, are really well thought out. There is actually deliberate contrast between Francis and his father, King Henry. Henry likes to wear bold colors and rich reds and actual silhouettes that are a lot more historically accurate, as are common with the older characters in this movie. Francis likes to go with black and darker tones and leaves his jackets deliberately undone for a more youthful and casual look. Now let's take a look at what these men would have actually worn. This here is an actual portrait of Francis. He was around the age he would have been when he and Mary were married. Men's clothing often featured the same fitted bodices and high collars as women. Uh, the doublets were shorter and they usually had a kind of peplum flaring from a basque or pointed waist. This here is a full body portrait of Don Carlos of Spain. Uh, the doublets are worn with breeches, which are these short poofy shorts and long hose. At the time, the shape of a man's legs was considered particularly attractive, so hose had to be fitted properly to showcase the musculature of the calves. Now, Francis's mother, Catherine de' Medici, is a particularly interesting character both in the show and in reality. Her family was a powerhouse in medieval Europe, and Catherine was known for being quite a strong and influential woman in her own right. In rain, her gowns are incredible, they tend to be a lot more conservative than the court ladies, and somehow look actually more like a medieval hoop blonde, like a long surcoat that belts at the waist, and so now we're going two centuries backwards instead of a few centuries forward. Like the other ladies, she's wearing her hair uncovered, but she's got her hair pinned up in a more 18th century or even up to Victorian style. Oh, but then we get the red gown from season three. Look at the beaded partlet and the heavily embroidered sleeves. This is one of the most historically accurate costumes that we see any of like the main characters wearing in the show. But as you can see in comparison, even this falls short of what the real Catherine would have worn. This gown would have been made of several meters of black silk velvet, was beaded head to toe with gold and pearls. It would have cost a king's ransom to make and would have been incredibly heavy to wear even without the fur oversleeves. All right, everyone, that's all we've got for today. I hope you've enjoyed the look at the costumes of rain and the fashions of the mid 16th century. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to be notified when I post new videos. Are there any period TV shows that you really enjoy? Let me know in the comments and I will feature them in an upcoming video. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you all next week. Bye.